Hello, my peeps, and welcome back to Passionate People and Preposterous Pew. I'm your host, Ike, and before, you know, I forget the nice words in the sentence, I'd like to just take a moment and say thanks for being here and giving this pod a listen. It means a lot to me that you chose to use your precious time and give me and my guests your ears. Now, after all this awesomeness, if you still have the wherewithal, it'd be really cool if you shared this with someone who you think would like it, or just subscribe yourself if you already haven't. That'd be dope. And if you want to tell me what parts of the show you were passionate about, peeved you off, or just say hi, you can always reach me on Twitter at likeikes and via email at passion and peeves podcast at gmail.com. So came back from a mildly heartbreaking uh, tournament finish at a local regional championship qualifier last night where myself and friend guest of the podcast, Aaron Barich won her seat and I was one game away from winning mine. This was a two-slot qualifier, so we both could have lived the dream of traveling in the same car and both winning our slot, and we were one game away, which was really sad. But that is how it goes. On to the next one. And other than missing out on like what such a cool potential run out it could have been, also it brings me a little sadness because my opponent was a fucking... Both opponents in the top four, they won't listen to this and I don't remember the names because they're not worth the energy, but they are tilting. We're both playing ridiculously slow, doing things that were a little peculiar. And uh, one of them was being a fucking right asshole. Now, look, I know it's competition. You want to do well. But when you are playing a non-physical activity where the yield is very minor. There's there's almost nobody making actual money off this game from a like competitive standpoint, sadly. Don't be an asshole. You know, just kind of like if you're playing if you're playing a rec league anything, there's no reason to be an asshole. You don't need to be a fucking dick. Let other people have fun. I say this because my opponent was all right. Aaron's opponent and my opponent's friend I have, I was like getting sent into fight or flight mode with any time this guy looked at me, it felt like he wanted me dead, which kudos, I guess you've mastered staring like a psycho, but boy, howdy did not help me enjoy my day. And I really am sad that he feels that's necessary and is under that impression because I, I don't, and I hope you don't either out there it, you can try and do your best without being a fucking dick sausage and being a decent human being and i would implore all y'all to do that because it makes the world a better and brighter place it makes people want to take part in activities and especially rec league and you know like magic like kind of low level non-professional sports that's kind of to some extent i believe my opinion is that's what sort of what's about it definitely you need an audience ingress point otherwise your game's going to dry out and die um so yeah other than that had a amazing session with my therapist yesterday before going to this tournament uh tournament other than that last little bit went quite well sad to lose wouldn't have cared if the guy wasn't like staring daggers at me like my opponent's friend was staring daggers at me and my opponent had played a modicum of speed watching paint dry uh other than that lovely tournament great to see the homies love all y'all um yeah just life's great um slowly starting to accept who i am the place i am in the world and that doing things that others have advocated against is okay and that sounds weird, so let me clarify. Uh, the other morning before my therapy session, I actually ended up watching a video that was like this kind of like, you got to get out there, you got to do the thing. It's this motivational like, you know, be scared, try something new. Ugh. It was a lot more amped than that. I'm forgetting the words partially on you know, the self-defense mechanism, I think. But it was this idea and then listening to it, it made the kind of every person life sound like a waste. 
And it made me judge myself and it made me sad. And then talking to my therapist was like, oh yeah, one, these are probably net negatives. Two, everybody's life is different. And to say it in these pejorative ways of like, you know, if you're not trying to, if you're not trying to break a record, what are you doing with your life? It's like, I'm trying to live. You know, I got a family. I got hours to support. Fuck face. I don't have infinite money and time. This idea of like, only sleep seven hours and, you know, get up and pray for three and work out for ten. It's like, it's not sustainable. It's not, arguably, some of these aren't even good for you, but I don't even know that much. But it diminishes that of the life that most all of us live. I don't think... One, I don't think they can be right, but like, I don't know. Don't know what I'm trying to say here. It just... I am coming to the personal realization, I guess, to, <laughs> to try to bring this back to my original point. I'm coming to the personal realization that it's okay. In fact, beautiful, depending upon your outlook, to do something humdrum. There is no shame in just doing what you like, you know, whether that be sitting in a chair watching a football game, uh, painting rocks going you know walking up the same mountain every day collecting a flower it doesn't you know if you are not hurting someone this is my current ethos anyway i think i'm using the word correctly uh <laughs> my brother will let me know if i'm not my current ethos is that if you're not hurting someone especially yourself and you're enjoying it sounds like you're doing okay to change gears a little bit today on the pod we have a long time friend and somebody that i've wanted to have on the podcast for a while just to chat because we haven't caught up in a while and it was great to find that he had a passion and peeve that i didn't even know about and to shoot the shit with him so without further ado please enjoy this episode with chris taylor all right, folks, today on the pod, we have someone who was capable enough to watch all the John Wick movies thrice over. He won a Magic Store Championship out of spite and has had three blood clots in the same day and lived to tell us about it. It's the amazing Chris Taylor! That's me. I'm here. You are here. <laughs> oh, my guy. It is good to get around to finally talking to you. But as I know you and the people don't, maybe you could tell them a little bit about your passion. My passion is I play a lot of MMOs and it is very fun. And I mostly do it for communities, but oh, man. There's just so many out there, so many different things to enjoy, so many creative spaces. It's pretty fantastic. When did you first get into... Okay, first off, to, to quantify for those who don't know, aren't in the space, what with what have you, what is a lot of MMOs to you? Like, how many hours, how many different oh, titles? Oh, God. Uh, so, a lot of MMOs to me is just the quantity of different ones I've played. I've played probably 20 or 30 or more that i've tried but really committed to maybe three or four honestly and as far as time played i think i did a slash played on one of my, my main character on wow that i had years ago and i had over a year played of game time on that one guy all right uh for those who want to know wow is world of warcraft arguably the biggest most successful and long running well i don't know depends how you want to look at running uh massive multiplayer online video games um so you put in an hour and that's 365 times 24 hours of time pl online playing the character right yes playing one character of like 20 that i have so how many to to break it down into a more understandable bite-sized chunk how many hours do you play on the average week on the average week, uh, oh man, too many. 
but to put a number to it, I'd say probably 20 plus. Uh, so it's a, it, effectively, it's a part time job's Job. worth yeah. of time. Yep. Why, why do you use the term too much? Uh, because depending on like someone's perspective, it could just be like, even though I enjoy it, I'm not really being productive in a way that I can really better myself. I'm just more enjoying my time as it is. So yeah, too much could be, I, I, for me, I would, I would think that's accurate because there's, there's other things I could be doing. Maybe I should. mean, sure, all of us could be doing something, but I don't know. They, as someone who spends too much, you know, has said once that I've spent too much time podcasting. I and for people out there who spend too much time doing something, I I would recommend that we all look at what too much means because I feel like I don't know about you, but when I say too much, I'm speaking for someone that's not in the room. Right. And that's, so, that's like, I don't know. It's a whole different conversation, a whole different platform. But kind of to get back to the podcast, but I'm Chuck. When did you first get introduced to MMOs? I would say eighth grade to an MMO that I still play to this day, um, RuneScape. Oh, digging deep. Yeah. You know, so eighth grade is what year? Oh God, um, was I graduated in oh eight? So probably oh three oh four around that time. Damn. Yeah. I'm going at twenty years strong, the first introduction. Yeah. So eighth grade, you get interested. This is still like during either dial up if you if your parents were on the cutting edge or modem, internet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Modem one hundred percent. Okay. So did you ever have any difficulties? With this, you know, infatuation via, you know, other people wanting to do stuff on the computer. Did you have your own computer? Or were you doing this on the family? You know, uh, I had my own computer. Um, Actually, no, I, maybe we had a router at that point. Because my stepdad has always been on the up and up on computers and stuff. Um, So he, we yeah, always so had, a, did, a, had a good network and a good foundation for it. Got so. to dodge that potential. I did, yeah. Paw. Yeah, but no, I, I definitely know what you're talking about of like being on AOL chat, getting a phone call, getting kicked off or something. <laughs> exactly. So you're starting this in eighth grade. How quickly did it take hold? Were you, you know, a toe in the water gamer, you know, just like, kind of, oh, this is fun, you know, just spending like an hour every so often? Or did you just, you know, take a sip of the wine and grab the chalice from the vicar? Uh, I definitely started slow because like, I, I like, I think I have like an addictive personality, but so like if it's something I I like and if I really like it I'll just I'll you know I do dive head uh dive in head first, but for MMOs it was definitely like like okay this is kind of fun but I don't fully get it so you know I didn't like fully immerse myself or I guess I couldn't at that point but once I kind of understood what was going on and really just like wrapped my head around it I I was all in I, it was to the <laughs> point that my stepdad started turning off my internet at like 9 p.m. <laughs> like go to bed. <laughs> But they never stopped you from playing it. They just reduced your playtime yeah. that you could during the day. That's interesting. Oh, How yeah. were your parents, like, other than knowing, like, trying to, you know, help do what was best for you in their eyes, how did they view this newfound predilection of yours? Um, My mother was never a fan. She still isn't. But my stepdad... <laughs> uh, he my stepdad was he was always like a gamer like he played a lot of starcraft and like the original warcraft rts's um and he he was like fine with it but you know limiting what i what i was doing so i could focus on school get sleep and whatnot but he did ultimately introduce me to world of warcraft and that that was the beginning of the real obsession did you ever end up playing with him or was uh, it more like, uh, here's this game I heard about, it's pretty cool, or did he play as we well? We played together maybe a couple of times, but I think whereas I got really into it and I started doing like harder content and stuff where you really had to play a lot to know what was going on, my stepdad was just a casual player. He just took in everything for what it was at his own pace, and 
because that we couldn't really do too much together. Like, I mean, we could do anything together, but I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm hyper competitive. So like, <laughs> if I'm going too slow or something, I, I, you know, maybe I'll just go do something by myself. So you're getting into this eighth grade. When would you say it kind of, did you ever hit that 20 hours a week when you were in school or is it only until, you know, that it got opened up past 9 PM that you could really like, you know, unfurl your wings and soar. Uh, th- those are a little one the same where they, that restriction was taken off when I graduated high school and then it was just open season. <laughs> What's the most amount of hours you think you've played in a week? Oh, man. Um, whew. Going back all the way to when I graduated high school, and even to this day, um, like if they're going to release a new expansion, a whole bunch of new content, I'll take that whole release week off of work, and I, I will play 20 hours a day if, I, if, I can, if I'm up for it. Good God. 20 hours oh. a day? Are you, like, do you naturally sleep very little, or are you just, like, Push yourself yeah. to the like awakeness brink. Uh, yeah, I naturally like I'm good on six hours of sleep. Like I'm good to go. Anything. Um, and during that one week, I'll really kind of push myself. Um, and yeah, I'll I'll get up six seven o'clock in the morning when my girlfriend goes to work, and then I'll go to bed three four a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so how how do obviously you know we got how your parents deal with this, but your your you know, loved one that you live with, how does she play? Is she okay with this? How does that affect and interact with her? Yeah. So, uh, no, she plays, um, she doesn't play as much as she would like, uh, cause she just has a more demanding job than I do, but (laughs) she, uh, no, she's definitely a gamer at heart. She, she, uh, she plays Warcraft. She plays RuneScape. Yeah. She, we play it all together. That's awesome. So when it comes to a hobby like this, what does your dream involvement are like, are you living your best life or is there something that you are, you know, working towards? Is there something that you would love to transpire? Like what is your dream involvement with MMOs look like? What are you hoping to accomplish in this field? Um, That's a good question. You know, I, have goals within the game itself of like i'm i consider myself like an upper tier player like i'm i'm very good at the game but there's you know the tier above where there's the people that are just cracked out of their mind good and there's like titles for being like the top one percenter of like this pvp or player versus player environment or this dungeon or raid environment that you get like special titles and rewards and I've never been able to nab one of those, and I really want to. I, I've been pretty close a couple of times, but to re- hit that top one percent, you really gotta gotta grind and commit to it. That's that's where I find that issue. But I think that's like, as long as I can do one of those at least once, I would be very fulfilled and very happy. Do you think that's a skill issue that you're looking to fix, or is that a time issue that you just need to plan accordingly for, given the right circumstance? I think it's a time issue, because um, to really hit that, you well, maybe time and networking issue because you also need to find the people that can that also have that time to commit to it. Because mm. um, it's an MMO, it, it, it's it's all group based content. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple levels to like getting through that threshold to get those achievements. So a lot of people, and this is diminished over the scale of both or over the time of both of our lives kind of look at video games and MMOs just kind of like, oh, those greasy nerds, or the, you know, they don't shower, yada, yada, yada. If you were to try to explain to the general public why you love MMOs in just one sentence, how do you think it would sound? Ooh, one sentence. Or, you know, a small paragraph, a tweet right. or something like that, you know. Um, I think MMOs connect people. I think I would go with that. I've uh, I've made I have decade long friendships that I still talk to people through playing MMOs. In fact, uh, a couple years ago when I got my blood clots, actually, I went to Minnesota for a WoW buddy's wedding. Him and his two brothers. I'd never met them uh, in person before, and I flew out there, met them all, was invited to the wedding, had a great time, and like I, is some of the best people I've ever met. 
That's awesome. What would, on the kind of flip side of that, what would stop you from coming back to MMOs? What would have to happen that you would full sail, like lose interest in this kind of uh, gaming space? Um, to full sail away from it, you know, I think it would either have to be like a pretty traumatic interaction that just really ruined me, or a lot of games are getting too pay to win, so to speak, you know, just like you could just buy your achievements, you could just buy everything that other people like have to work for. I think like diminishing the value of put all the time I put in would probably kill it for me. Mm. So interesting you're talking about toxic interactions have you what's the most toxic interaction you've had if that is something because it it sounds like if that's something that's going to stop you from playing that you may have had some of those along the way is that is that fair to say uh yeah i i yeah i would say there's at least one time that's happened but i've nothing really to the scale that's made me want to quit i've taken a break but um i always come back (laughs) <laughs> do you take the break when you take breaks do you take a break with the intention of coming back or are you like i'm out of here and everybody's like all right we'll see you in a couple weeks chris and you're like <laughs> no you won't and then like a couple weeks come by and you're like i'm back they're like yeah we knew it uh, a little both <laughs> <laughs> why have you tried to quit in the past um i I, don't th- I wouldn't say it's that i've really tried to quit um i it's just either i've done everything i can in the game and I don't have time to commit to do more, or uh, they've just had periods of like a content drought, so to speak. Like there's just no, like you know, they give you this awesome raid or dungeon, and then it's just no updates to the live service game over like two years, and it's like, okay, I've I've done this enough that I'm brain <laughs> dead. I'm gonna yeah. go take a break. So if you didn't find gaming. Like, if you didn't find, you know, RuneScape in 8th grade, what do you think you would have done to, like, fulfill that kind of passion, that comp- competitive, that, you know, friendly interactiveness? Where where do you think your time would have gone? Uh, sports. Because I used to be way big into sports before I got into gaming. What sports were you play? Um, I did a lot of soccer, football. Uh, a little bit of basketball, uh, but a lot of track. I, 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 uh, the best I used to run the mile, hundred hurdle, and four hundred hurdle. I think my Damn. best mile time was like a five twenty-five mile. Woo! That is not slow. Holy macaroni! Oh yeah, it was, it was fun. But I never maintained good enough grades to be able to stay on the team, so that was unfortunate. Oh no. So is that something that you've kept up with in any way, or has that been, as time has gone on, you've just found more enjoyment and more fulfillment with playing with people online versus like running and playing with people in person? Um, I'd say, I mean, it's not something I've kept up with by any means. Um, it's something I wish I had kept up with, and I do often try to get back into shape, and I do go do the occasional, um run or play basketball with my buddies but i think it's more of an ease of access of like locally it's harder to find that kind of stuff to get into whereas you know i have a computer at home and the everything is a click away <laughs> i can run right here from the comfort of my desk chair exactly do you ever miss that kind of physical exhilaration to like running doing hurdles and stuff like that or 100%. do you find that is it in any way replicable by playing this online game or is it just too different? No, it's, it's absolutely uh, replicatable and I've, I've done it where I, I, you know, the times where I have almost hit that goal, particularly in the, the player versus player environment, uh, where it's just, you know, you, you barely lose by the skin of your teeth. It's like, Oh, just one more second. And I had him kind of a thing. And yeah, yeah, so I, I've definitely experienced it on both ends, but I, I think probably the more satisfying one is definitely the the more physical in-person aspect of competing. So as this is a massive multiplayer online gaming experience, is there someone, some guild, some group 
some team that you would like to work or collab with? Um, no, you particular... talked about like wanting to, you know, accomplish this dream of you know making one of these like kind of landmark accomplishments, but you needed people of a of a certain ilk to play with. Do you feel like you have them now, or is they are you still in search of you know your like? I have some of them now. So it's funny <laughs> you say that because just before we started this, um, some of my uh, friends in game were actually just messaging me about posting, because uh, there's certain websites that people have dedicated like for World of Warcraft and like mm -hmm. in any MMO really, where people that want to play at that higher, higher caliber can kind of post themselves on there. And so people yeah. looking to create, you know, the groups <laughs> for that content can just like kind a of... LinkedIn chainmail dot yeah. com kind of situation. yep exactly linkedin chain oh i love it um and so we actually put a posting out today because we need one one more person to kind of round out our group and then we're picking out what days work best for all of us because we we told ourselves last uh like last time or because it's in season so we told ourselves last season uh we're really gonna push for it you know we're gonna get our score higher we're gonna get that stuff and then the like two weeks in our our uh, main, uh, we call him a tank. You know, he holds all the threat, takes all the damage. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go for a while, guys." And he just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. Yeah. So oh, this yeah. is this is more like a, uh, kind of like adult, uh, you know, intramural sports league than it is. The way you're talking about this is the way like a um a like an aggressive like uh work softball team would be of like yeah. all right you know who's the best players we want to get the best like almost doing like tryouts like have you ever done tryouts or is there a a system oh, like yeah. that or okay so oh, you're 100%. literally looking to sculpt and you know make the best team for all parties involved so that their time is utilized in the most you know proper manner given what you guys all want out of this one oh yeah it's all about efficiency you know nobody wants to waste their time nobody wants to you know just go in and spend hours trying to uh finish this dungeon on time and then have, just have not you be been able cut to. from the team ever i have not i i typically leave because <laughs> when you get... i don't get cut i leave <laughs> yeah <laughs> um just in the higher, when you get to the higher tier of things, you know, like just like I said, you know, people don't want to waste their time. So if there's like the slightest hiccup, some people just aren't the best natured people at that higher level. Yeah. And I, you know, I'd rather, I want to do the tough stuff and finish it, but I'd, I'd rather have fun doing it with people I enjoy being around. Have you had to kind of, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but kind of demote yourself to be playing in a zone where you are more comfortable with people that you're going to enjoy with people that you're going to be of the right skill level or have you just gone and like done a rocky montage and like powered up to be in the right to be in the zone that you were previously at um i i would say i've probably demoted the content i'm doing so i enjoy it more does that make the wins feel less valuable or do you still find yourself enjoying the victory just as much uh probably a little less because when i you know when you demote yourself like that i'm doing stuff i've already been doing instead of like trying to push the limit so it's but it's i usually do it in a way that i can kind of restructure and rebuild and then hopefully push further okay so you demote yourself you're in the right zone leveling up but you are looking at reascending yes okay so if you can because it does sound like this is something you would approach i mean you're approaching it like an athlete would a sport can you walk us through what a if they're all the same a day in the life but if they vary a week in the life of a serious mmo player hmm uh yeah in, in regards I mean, I can... to the gaming obviously you can leave out the shower shit and shave right 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 uh yeah for world of warcraft in particular um because that's one the, really one of the only avenues where i've really pushed myself um you know you gotta get on you gotta get your 
your uh, consumables, as they're called, you know, your items that, you know, buff your stats and make uh, make everything a little bit easier that, you you know, you have to spend time and go get that or you have to make money and just buy it from people. And then you got to watch videos of these other top players that have done the content that you haven't done. So you can like, oh, that's a good strategy or I don't or I don't quite like that strategy. I'm going to go watch someone else and just kind of get the knowledge of knowing what you have to do before you get in there. And then, you know, beyond that, it's you know, just getting the people, get in. Once you're in the dungeon, it's like, okay, everyone, you know, go through your ready checklist. Do you have A, B, C consumables? Do you have the right talents? Because you, you know, you want to optimize and change your talents between each dungeon. What works better here is useless there. And then kind of once you get in there, it's like, okay, like clear, clear comms, we got to focus and, you know, do the pull and you're going through the dungeon go through the motions um if typically when someone messes up like if i mess up i own it 100 percent um and it's like okay well let's correct it and keep moving you know keep going and then it's just rinse and repeat for dungeons really because uh that's that's all i really do is grind mm. uh, the dungeons because they have what's called a mythic plus system so when you clear a dungeon you get a key and this key is labeled for a particular dungeon and you go in there, clear it. If you clear it in the time limit, you upgrade it. And you can upgrade it anywhere from one to three levels, depending on how fast you do it. So clearing, for those of you at home who don't know, is defeating all the monsters, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah precisely. Going through, you have to kill all of the uh, NPCs inside within the uh, predetermined amount of time. NPCs also non-player characters just for those at home who aren't aware of many people are going to know what these are some people aren't fair enough um okay so would you say you are like most of the time the team leader in these because it sounds like the way you're kind of talking about this is if you have the structure memorized which makes me think that you may have kind of like laid it out in a way do you find yourself being you know the kind of captain or are you you know what role do you say you'd play the role I play, not not I'm, in the not not in the game sense. I mean, more right, the, right. The no, sense. more okay. of a um, a team dynamic position, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm more of a I would call a flex position. So like I I can. So like if if someone isn't willing to lead, I will step up. Mm. Um, but typically I I like to just sit back and not make the the, the judgment calls. But sure. Yeah, no, I I definitely do uh, a bit of everything. So in many lines of work and passions of, you know, life eating quality, there are usually secret terms or just secrets that are only used by those who play, work, and spend their time there. What, if any, are some of your favorite kind of terminologies from MMOs that you just love that very few people know about. Oh, term hmm, terminology. Um, I would have to say that there's really actually not a whole lot of terminology. I guess maybe not any that I can apply broadly to MMOs in general, but like more game specific ones. But is there hmm. any one game specific one for a? That you just enjoyed, regardless of how much you played the game. I think I'll probably just, I'll, I'll I'll go with AFK. <laughs> AFK means what? AFK means away from keyboard. <laughs> so have you, you ever a... have you ever used this in real life? Because I know I have oh one hundred percent oh yeah all the time. I'll just be checked out sitting at the dinner table and yeah, says, yeah. what are you doing? Like, oh sorry, I was AFK. Yeah, I was AFK. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know. Yes, yeah, the amount of times I've done that at work, somebody comes up and goes, "Did you do this?" I'm like, "Huh?" They're like, "Are you listening to me?" Sorry, I was, I was AFK for a bit there. Yeah, absolutely AFK. And then you get them looking at you like, "What does what does that mean?" Yeah, and you find <laughs> out, or you find out like your friends, and like they're like, "I got you." And you're like, "Oh, oh yeah, we, yep. we should hang out more often." <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> In this field, as you know, you approach this competitively, and you've worked with so many people for so long. Do you have a best or most memorable piece of advice that you've received that helped you grow in your pursuit of excellence? 
yeah, if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Love that. Yep. How did that help you? Um, it helped me really just take a step because, um, like at one point in Warcraft, I was doing uh, mythic rating, which is the highest tier of the content you can do in the game, and you know, I I really wanted to to finish the raid and do you know kill the boss and get the loot and all that stuff and you know get the nice fancy title that comes with it but i just was really was not enjoying being with the people that i was mm. with mm-hmm. and like you know they 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 were the caliber of player like eventually like they got it but you know i did leave because i it just wasn't fun and you know if i'm gonna do if i'm gonna play a game that i love to play and you know spend my money to play i i want to enjoy it and not yeah hate myself for sure sound schmatt so this is a very interesting curiosity when i went to my first college experience straight out of high school i was very much addicted to magic as i still arguably am now and at 18, my mom took me to four different colleges. I think that I had been accepted to or that I was looking at uh, sending out interest letters or whatever. I don't actually remember because it's been way too long. And when we went to each campus, I was barely paying attention. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then after the tour was over, I went and literally searched out a store, like a magic store near each of them to see if I wanted to bother attending the university if the store was worth it. Right. Very, very good for education. When it came to getting a job, was there any interplay of knowing how much you wanted to have time available to focus on being able to play MMOs that went into choosing of position or choosing of occupation? Um, I would say initially finding like a career path, no. But once I kind of had a path in mind any further jobs beyond that 100 <laughs> percent. yeah without a doubt because uh initially i was going into like uh working with asphalt and doing state certified testing and stuff and with that job comes a lot of working nights because you know sometimes you can only pave at night and so when i was looking for a new job in that regard i definitely looking at positions it's like okay what do we got here days okay good and then a lot of nights nope. <laughs> all right next one in game what is the proudest accomplishment you have that you wish more people knew about Ooh. yeah like if you could like have a wwe styled belt a banner a crown that said this accomplishment you know is there one that you really are just you wish you could let the people know. Uh, yeah. It, so, in World of Warcraft, you get an achievement called Cutting Edge. When you when you clear that mythic raid, when you do the hardest content in the game, you get Cutting Edge, and it has a nice, cool title. And um, I've done that twice. One of the times, it was kind of a mistake on the creators' end, where it was just too easy, and like <laughs> everybody had it. And then the second time, it was like actually really like tough content and uh, really hard to do. And so I had that, and that achievement was, I was so proud of myself, I was so excited, and I just kind of kind of scanned the room in a sense of, like, the people I know. It's like, who would care about this if I told them right now? <laughs> <laughs> so I went to my girlfriend, and she's like, oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> in movies and TV, they often depict everybody's passion sometimes they do it correctly sometimes they do it incorrectly often it's usually some of column a some of column b what are some of the best standouts of both columns for you in regards to your passion how has hollywood done your right and how has hollywood done your wrong oh man um i would say 99 percent of the time hollywood gets it wrong at least from from the, from the media i've seen of just what are some of the most damning ones? Oh, the most damning. Oh god, I can't even remember. It was some some movie my girlfriend had on of like some kid changed bodies with like Kevin Durant or something. And Kevin Durant's now a high school a high school kid who loved playing oddly enough World of Warcraft in this movie. And just 
the him being with his the kids of their friends and like it's like lunchtime at the school and they're talking about oh you know we got to go in we got to go in the game tonight boys we get we got to go into this dungeon and we got to do you know abc we got to do this and it's like all the vernacular and the, all the terminology everything was just so far from being accurate it was i had to walk away <laughs> I believe I'm double checking this really quickly, but I believe the movie you're talking about is Thunderstruck. Yeah, that, that I think that sounds right. Yeah. And oh man, yeah, that was that was rough to watch, but <laughs> the, a really good one though. Um, oddly enough, was South Park. I yeah. mean, like, there's a lot of things that was wrong because they, I mean they do it purposely for the sake of comedy, but like they were actually very accurate and just very funny with how they depicted world of warcraft and i thought i thought that was great <laughs> yeah i i do really respect uh, you know as we both are the the way we actually know each other is from playing magic and they also did you know an homage to magic in a later episode oh, that was so good and it was so bad that i think it was good where like they they did not even come close to trying to oh yeah have it precisely. Do anything with the game except other than hey it's magic hey they said some card names neat yeah, yep, 100%. Kind of on the same uh, trail of thought, what would you say is the biggest misconception about MMOs and just online gaming in general by the wider world? Um, I would say a big misconception is, at least from what my experience, is that a lot of people call it just a, you know, a waste of time. And that, you know, you're not forming any real connections or anything like that yeah. because my my anecdotal experience is that it, it just 100 percent proves that wrong for sure uh, yeah and also know, what i mean a lot of society considers not a waste of time i would argue is a waste of time you know, no precisely like, yeah people are like oh you're doing that instead of spending time with people that's a waste of time what are you going to do oh we're going to watch a movie and then drink a beer it's like how is this any different yeah i've had someone give me a lot of crap before because i wouldn't go to a movie and and I because I wanted to say I'm gonna play my game, and I said, well, how much are you gonna spend for that movie right now? I was like, oh, I'm gonna spend you know twenty bucks for the ticket or whatever for a two hour movie. I go, that's cool. I paid fifteen dollars for my one month of unlimited entertainment, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll take my taste win. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm spending time with friends and yep. having conversations as opposed to sitting in a dark room and just looking at something. Exactly. Suck on that. <laughs> <laughs> What, on the kind of flip reverse, what would you say is your favorite non-obvious aspect to this that people don't know that, you know, it just kind of tickles your funny bone. It just brings joy to you that so many people, sadly, from the outside, just don't know that joy of MMO. Ooh, you know, um, I would say storytelling. Because I think a lot of people look at an MMO... And they just the, the the people that aren't familiar with it, and they just see, um, oh yeah, that guy has like a sword and he's fighting a dragon. Like, okay, that's whatever. They're playing some fantasy game, but I think when you actually look at the story and like absorb it instead of because I I mean, well, ah, it's hard to word it when you <laughs> like you see something and you know what it is, right? But okay. you don't absorb it, if that makes sense. Like okay. you don't truly understand what it is, I guess is a way to a way to put it. I'm, I'm just, picking up what you're putting down. I think. Yeah, just being becoming so immersed in it that you know I do lose that track of time where I realize, oh, that's twenty hours gone by. Have they, you know, speaking kind of going back a little bit because you remind me of it. It they've done a fair amount, not a lot, but they've done a fair amount of either homages or films directly portraying a game. Have any of them been either evocative enough of the experience or telling enough of the story that you think they are worth checking out or that you think they gave a fair shake to their, you know, kind of creative uh, jumping off point? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, they did a World of Warcraft movie, which honestly, uh, I had low expectations going into it because kind of a lot of live adaptations of things like this. I don't think can really be pulled off to like get the same experience. I think is like you know playing the game instead of watching the movie. But I think World of Warcraft did a good job with their movie that it, I I thought it brought across the story of it and kind of what they 
the messages they wanted to send with it. Awesome. All right. To go from, you know, the massively marvelous to the maddeningly potentially mundane, Chris, my friend, what is your preposterous peeve? Oh, God. Um, group family text messages. I mean, group messages in general, like text messages in particular, but the family ones just, oh, God, it, it's, I don't, I don't need those in my life, but they keep happening. <laughs> What is it about them that bother you? It's just people telling stuff. How is that uh, different than a normal text? It's different because sometimes you just don't want to be part of the conversation, but you don't have a choice. Because whereas like on like Facebook Messenger or something like that, I can just block people and not care. But I, you know, they're my family. I I don't <laughs> want to block their numbers as much. I mean, I do want to, but I shouldn't. <laughs> so okay. like. Uh, my aunt was trying to to plan a Christmas uh thing that she does yearly, but you know she sends out the big group text message to thirty thirty five people like, hey guys, here's the plan. Okay, cool, we got the plan. And then twenty minutes later, a thumbs up, and it's just like, oh, another notification, another alert, another this, another that. And then I I end up muting the conversation. The next thing I know, there's another ding, and I go, what the hell? Oh well, they removed grandma from the threads. So now there's thirty four people instead of thirty five. <laughs> and then okay so i mute that one. Oh, okay well okay well now grandpa's not part of this because he has to be removed it's like oh well, could i be removed no you need to be part of this oh, great <laughs> fun when did this first start by like was this you know like year one of like when they did this a problem or did it grow over time uh it definitely grew over time because initially like, like oh okay this is kind of neat i see the importance of this i'm i'm game with it but as soon as I guess maybe I had less of a rule or just stopped caring as much, it was just like, that was just a nuisance. <laughs> Do you have a story of when this uh, peeve perhaps shown brightest? Was a offender, you know, caused problems in the real world? Um, Not to that level. I mean... Like maybe my cousin, she <laughs> she kept it going for a while to a point that I I did actually block her number until I saw her like on Christmas or like you know on on the day in question for the event, <laughs> and that's when I unblocked her and I had like thirty text messages come through and then I saw her in person and she was not a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried explaining it to any of your family? Like, look. This just you know this fuck. Oh oh me. well yeah I am I am an open book I you know Chris we uh, never got they your, are they your... are not about it they're like nah you gotta, gotta oh yeah suffer. no like Chris <laughs> you you really need to be replying to those are you you know <laughs> I'll get a phone call of like Chris I haven't like a seen... fucking TPS report at home oh this god so cool. yeah one hundred percent I get a call from my aunt. Chris you didn't uh, reply to the message in the group of... oh yeah now I've had that muted for like a week oh really yeah so do you not want to come no I'll I'll be there. Oh, then why is it muted? Because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I <laughs> well I collect myself. <laughs> if you could have listeners of this podcast hear one song of your choosing, which would it be? It would be a song called "My Sweet Shadow" by my favorite band, In Flames. It's a they're a what's called melodic death metal and they uh kind of pioneered their genre they're one of like three main bands but that song in particular i think is very unique um and it, it you know it, it just hits the right tunes for me it's just a really really good song awesome and with that we're going to throw it to our sponsors so chris can have a minute to pull on this here rubber suit before we get up on the lightning you round. got it but if advertisements aren't your thing, why not have a listen to My Sweet Shadow by In the Flames? Or if you really wanted to hear a song from a previous episode, check out the playlist on Spotify, Passionate People and Preposterous Peeve Podcast, Song Rex. It's a long title, I know. Don't worry, there's a link in the description. Either way, see you in a bit. Have you ever just looked at fried carbs on a plate and thought, I need to eat those, but it doesn't taste all that appetizing? Introducing Catsup. Catsup is a sugary and red syrupy paste that'll overshadow any unappreciated taste. Simply douse the unpreferred tasting object and ingest. Mmm. Thanks, catsup. And we're back. 
Chris, are you ready to enter? Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm ever really ready for anything, but... Too bad! Yay! All right, put your seatbelts in... That's not how that works. All right, buckle your seatbelts and keep your arms inside the ride at all times. Is karma real? Yes. Is there a price for you to give up your passion forever? No. Would you rather have McDonald's or a steak dinner from a charity event as your final meal? Steak dinner? <laughs> Make the food or do the dishes? Uh, dishes. Did you ever cheat on a test in school? No. Are you out of touch or is it the children who are wrong? Both. Do you, <laughs> do people have an inherent duty to help each other? No. Are hot dogs tacos? No. <laughs> You're having the best day of your life. What happens next? Another amazing thing or something terrible? Amazing. Would you rather meet an alien or a ghost? Ghost. Do people who prefer Pepsi to Coke deserve rights? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Is there such a thing as a perfect piece of art? No. Skydiving or deep sea diving? Sky. Have you <laughs> Have you ever had a crush on a cartoon character? 100%. Is peeing in the shower normal human behavior? Or just for those filthy mer people? Oh, that's normal. Would you rather your first kiss had been next to a pig pen or inside a dumpster? Uh, pig pen? Album, shuffle, or playlist? Ooh, shuffle. Do you read in the bathroom? Yes. Is professional wrestling cool or lame? Lame. Would you rather have tentacle arms or kangaroo legs? Kangaroo legs. Do you create your own thoughts, or do you just listen to them? Listen. Which is realer, mermaids or Bigfoot? Bigfoot. Could you eat 37 of your favorite food for $5,000 in a one-hour time limit? One, oh, absolutely. Congratulations, you survived the lightning round! I did it! Now, before we move on, I, like many listeners at home, would like to now know, what is your favorite food that you could eat 37 of in a one-hour time limit for $5,000? Oh, those, um... Oh, what, uh, the the little like oatmeal cream cookies. You know what I'm oatmeal talking about? Cream cookies. You talking They're... about the? I, I think it's like um oh what's that? A Keebler? Is that what you're talking about? The ones that are like? No, no, no. They're um. Oh my goodness, what is the brand? Like you could go down to um like the dollar store and get like. Oh, a... you're talking about the oatmeal cream pies. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, little Debbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can eat thirty seven of those. Oh, for sure. All right. Uh, folks, we're going to need to get $5,000 to put this liar to the test. Uh, oh, I will hurt myself for that much money. Do the <laughs> Join the Patreon. If we hit $5,000, we're going to see if Chris can eat 37 of these. Hell yeah. Now, as a reward, my gallivant guest, I grant thee a lightning round question of your own to be echoed until we get bored of it. What you got okay. for us? Uh, would you rather drink too much alcohol or smoke too much weed? Smoke too much weed. Done it before. I've done both before. They they are not good. I would highly recommend against both. However, if you smoke too much, at least I just become catatonic and become basically <laughs> a, a life size uh, figurine, and I can't move, which sucks. But eventually it fades, and then you know you go back to normal and you feel stupid. Uh, but there's no repercussions when you get, or at least when I get too drunk. I lose, I have very few inhibitions, but I lose all of them. Oh, yeah. And so then I have apology letters and texts to write <laughs> and then bad looks to receive. I would rather people just be like, Jeez. did you got too high? You were like a freaking, you were like a statue or you were like a fucking Easter Island head. Be like, yep, that was hilarious. Ha ha. And then just move on with my life. Yeah. Whereas the other one, you like, now you got to start trying to explain things you don't remember. Uh, I mean, I've never, luckily, I've never gotten blackout drunk. Uh, but I mean, just even no, I mean, probably knowing what you did is worse or maybe it's better. I don't know. But just dealing with the people like looking at you or talking to you weird because you were in a state that, of your own making where you were out of control is pretty rough. Oh, yeah. I've what only, about so, you, my friend? So as far as drinking, or I mean, I, I'd rather smoke too much weed as well. But 
Oh man, my twenty first birthday is like the worst experience I've ever had that because it was also cool. the first time I ever drank. And Ooh. so I was supposed to be monitored and the zero to hundred that... real fast, huh? Oh yeah. Oh no, it was it I if memory serves correctly, <laughs> I had something about thirty six shots within about a four hour time span. Well, I'm surprised you're not dead. Precisely. That's a lot. So yeah, no, it's it was really bad. So like we started at my uncle's place and um like the little 12 i think it was like 12 ounce size of like jack daniels someone handed to me and i was just like okay so i just chugged it and then Ooh. like the night just kind of proceeded from that like we went <laughs> down to the bar and they like oh it's your 21st birthday let's give you uh they call it a stoplight where it's a red shot yellow shot green shot i was like okay so i down those and then <laughs> i i am so you know 22 sheets to the wind I'm sitting there at the bar next to my sister, and she looks at me, and she's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I don't think I'm doing that great. <laughs> and then my next immediate memory is being carried out of the bar by my family, because my whole family was there at this bar. My grandmother, everyone. I had apparently uh, blacked out, fell off of the stool, and on the way Ooh. of falling off the stool, like mid-fall, I like puked on the counter and hit my head on the counter. <laughs> and so my grandmother was the Did one to all, clean it all up. <laughs> oh gram gram <laughs> that's rough oh yeah then i spent like the next like six hours like you know praying to the porcelain god and my <laughs> mother and sister feeding me pedialyte and water yeah oh, yeah that was awful all right with that lovely <laughs> lavish tale out the way <laughs> anything you want to plug shouts you'd like to give places people can find you or your content as we come to a close here uh yeah, you know, I uh, occasionally stream on Twitch. It's a uh, superx TV. Uh it's S U B A R A C S TV. And uh that's really it. Awesome. Well, thank you Chris for being my guest today and a special thanks to my editor Richard Ashford and my composer Joshua Gibbons. And thank you. Yes, you listening at home or have you found time to appreciate this? Time is the most precious commodity we have and I appreciate you spending years with us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, or just share it with a friend. Every little bit helps. Or if you already have and are out of episodes to listen to, don't worry. We put out a new episode every Monday at midnight on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes at Fashion People and Preposterous Peeves Podcast. And a very special thanks are due to our patron, Sibeli Yellow. If you'd like to join Set Illustrious Ranks and have your name read aloud, just head on over to patreon.com backslash Passion People and Preposterous Peeves Podcast. And remember, folks, if days are numbered and songs are sung, at the end of the day, I think we've all won. So please stick around, because great things only just begun.